Hi, I'm Sam Lucas from Promenade Software. Here are eight things I wish I knew before getting started with AWS. Whether you're transitioning your software from another platform, on-prem, or just brand new to the cloud, you have a lot of the same important decisions to make in getting started. With so many moving parts, it can be really difficult to find and sift through all of the necessary information, and all too easy to let something important slip through the cracks. AWS is the most comprehensive cloud platform in the world, making it perhaps the most powerful tool out there for a tech company, but that comes with a considerable burden of knowledge. So we thought it would be helpful to pull together our experience with the platform here at Promenade and devise a short list of tips and important considerations that'll hopefully save you some time and money in the process. Plan ahead for the hybrid cloud. There are plenty of instances where you might find yourself on multiple cloud platforms. Perhaps some services can be found cheaper elsewhere, or perhaps you have a client with platform-specific needs. In any case, you don't want vendor lock to impede your work. In this case, containerization is your friend. Amazon has a handful of services that support containerization out of the box. For monolithic applications or independent services, Elastic Beanstalk is a great option with highly managed architecture and deployment. For microservice-based applications, AWS offers their Elastic Container Service, or ECS, which handles container orchestration for you. If you prefer to use Kubernetes for container orchestration, they offer Elastic Kubernetes Service, or EKS. For an infrastructure as code solution, which I would recommend for any cloud project, Terraform is a great cloud agnostic option. Or if you're sure you'll be sticking with AWS, CloudFormation is a great alternative. GovCloud is a highly restricted variant of AWS for government affiliated organizations and service providers. It can cut down considerably on the requirements that you are personally responsible for in any federal compliance process, but it does come at a cost. There are some important differences between these flavors, and not all of them are clearly documented. So consider running your entire system architecture by AWS support before making the transition to GovCloud. GovCloud only has two regions, each with only three availability zones, and some services are only available in one or the other. Not all AWS services are available in GovCloud, and some have limited functionality. You may even find yourself leaving some services behind on standard if they're critical to functionality of your system, such as Route 53, which is a popular DNS solution on AWS. You may already know that AWS breaks down its service into several regions. Those regions break down further into availability zones. But the way these services interact with their regions is not always straightforward. For example, you may find yourself in a different region depending on the URL that you're logging in from. Take a look at the subdomain of the URL to see which region you will be brought into. Some services are only available in certain regions, and you may notice your region selection change automatically when you go to those pages. Availability zones can grow over time, and eventually they cannot expand any further, at which point AWS may prevent you from launching new instances in that zone, or it may not show up on new accounts at all. So two accounts may see different lists of availability zones for the same region. AWS has very granular pricing, which is especially nice for small, simple systems. But as your system grows, it can be increasingly difficult to keep tabs on every single metric that you're being charged for. This means it's good to plan ahead for not just scalability, but shareability. Traffic can be highly controlled within a single virtual private cloud, or VPC, so share one or as few as possible for as long as possible, until either space or data segmentation becomes a concern. Reduce the number and tier of services for the resources that you're using wherever possible. The obvious one here would be spot instances for cheaper, albeit less reliable compute in EC2. A less common but very impactful one is sharing the network firewall, which can be done for multiple VPCs using AWS Transit Gateway. And for storage in S3, consider moving lightly touched or long-term data to cold storage, which is cheaper in exchange for a slower recovery time. This is a third-party tool not affiliated with Amazon, but it's free, open source, and I highly recommend you give it a look. It streamlines the authentication process with the command line interface considerably, including tools for quickly swapping out your access keys. It's capable of automatically refreshing your credentials for long-running processes, and it supports two-factor authentication out of the box, including physical two-factor devices like the YubiKey with a little extra setup. Like mom always said, trust in layers. When it comes to cloud security, that means as many layers of security as possible. Network firewalls, application firewalls, traffic filtering, and any other security services your particular resources offer. 
Add another layer on top of that with tools like Amazon Detective, Amazon Inspector, or Amazon Guard Duty, which all in different ways can help you continually monitor your system and identify security threats or suspicious activity. And don't assume your architecture is perfectly stable either. Make sure you deploy into multiple availability zones, mirror any databases you've got, and check out AWS Backup for a quick way to restore your system in the event of an outage. AWS currently has over 200 products and services, so it's very likely they already have a service for the particular feature that you're after. It's best not to reinvent the wheel. Use higher level and managed services wherever possible to cut down on your development time. We mentioned a few already, such as ECS and Beanstalk, but another good one to know is AWS Systems Manager, which can greatly simplify the management, grouping, and visualization of your resources. It's best to automate things whenever you can and set alarms whenever you can. Check out CloudWatch Alarms to set alerts for any particular logs you might get and automate any mitigation techniques. For maximum insight into your system, it's best to have logs on everything. Access logs and service logs wherever possible, and have your applications send their logs to CloudWatch as well so they can all be in the same place. You can track all actions in your system and who performed them on every resource using CloudTrail. And it's best to put tags on all of your resources, which is important for quickly and correctly identifying them or for mapping your cloud infrastructure. Thanks for listening. This has been eight things I wish I knew before getting started with AWS. We hope they can be helpful for you in getting started.